I was able to get it full screen, so we're just going to pretend that that didn't happen so it didn't mess up on me. All right, so let's look at the reason I like to cover these sections together is because it's really just section 2.2 is really just a continuation of all things functions. But specifically, we're going to talk a little bit more about what the function graphs can tell us in section 2.2. All right, so the first thing um, is we read a graph like we um, read a sentence. Um, functions, uh, we do from left to right is what I meant to finish saying there. Um, so we look at a graph like we read a sentence from left to right. Okay? And a function can be increasing from left to right, decreasing from left to right, constant from left to right, or most likely it can be a combination of multiples of these. Only the most basic graphs only do one thing. A lot of times they'll increase for a time and then they'll decrease and sometimes they'll be constant. But just like I mentioned before, make sure you look at the graphs um, from left to right. Always, always. <clears throat> so we're going to look at a lot of graphs that have a combination of increasing and decreasing sections. Um, but before we do, let's just look at lines. Those are the simplest type of graphs we can have. So this line would be increasing because from left to right it's going up. And then this line is decreasing. And then what would a line look like if it were constant? Just flat, right? So horizontal, in other words. But unless we're talking about lines, like the picture implies, um, we're going to have intervals where it might be doing more um, than one of these. So we're going to use interval notation again here to describe when a graph is increasing, decreasing, and when it's constant. So a couple of things um, you can use as a guide. Uh, first of all, when we're doing interval notation for increasing and decreasing, you only care about the x values. <clears throat> and number two is we're always going to use parentheses, never brackets. And we're going to talk about why when we look at some examples. So with domain and range, you have this question of, do I use a bracket, do I use a parentheses, and you know, when do I use each? You don't have to worry about that with increasing and decreasing. <clears throat> All right, so we need to look at some graphs, okay? Um, but I'm going to show you a graph, and I want you to tell me um, when is the graph increasing, when is it decreasing, and finally, when is it constant? <clears throat> so we got to sketch just a little bit more graphs. I'm going to try to keep them simple. So I want you to go over to the right one and draw a point and then draw a parabola through that point. So you don't have to have the perfect slope edge there. You really just need to make sure that that turning point is the same. <clears throat> and so what I asked you for was to tell me when is it increasing, when is it decreasing, and when is it constant? Uh, the x value is 1 there. I might have said 2, but yeah. Shift it over to the 1. All right, so this is kind of like the structure of your homework will be. Like, it'll ask you three parts. It'll say, when is this graph increasing? When is it decreasing? And when is it constant? Well, the first thing is, I think um, one of these is never, right? What is it never doing? Constant. It's never constant, right? So you would just say never or something like that. Okay, I think on my math lab, 
it has you choose a multiple choice option that says none. Okay, it be pretty self-explanatory. <coughs> All right, so if we look at the graph from left to right, what's it doing first? Is it increasing first or is it decreasing first? Decreasing. It's decreasing first, right? So if we look from left to right, it's decreasing. Okay, and remember I said only look at which values? Yeah, only look at the x values. Okay, so from what? How far back will this go if we keep drawing it? From negative infinity, right, to what x value do we make the stop? We stop decreasing at what? At 1. Notice we don't care about the y value, only the x value. And then after 1, what do we start doing? We start increasing. So how are we going to write that? From 1 to what? Infinity. Okay. By the way, the reason we don't say um, to include 1 is couldn't you argue that this is either the end of the decrease or the beginning of the what? Increase. Increase. So we just don't include turning points at all because there's confusion about which part they would belong to. They technically belong to both parts. Okay, so we just don't include them. Um, all right, so let's look at maybe a little fancier graph. So I'm going to be lazy here and say same instructions. In other words, I still want you to find where the following graph is increasing, where it's decreasing, and where it's constant. All right, so I want you to sketch a graph where you go out three in every direction, and then I'm going to list some points for you to plot, and then we're going to connect those points. Okay, I think that'll be the easiest way for us to all get the same picture. So these are the points I want you to plot. Um, negative 1, 3, 1, 3, 2, 0, and negative 2, 0. If you are asked to graph on my math lab, you use your mouse click just like you would like to draw a point. So wherever you want a point, you'll literally click your mouse at that point. So it's actually pretty nice to graph using my math lab. So negative 1, 3 is here. 1, 3 is here. 2, 0 is here. And negative 2, 0 is here. So notice you kind of have these four points. So this is what I want your graph to look like. I want it to continue going down forever, have a flat top, and continue going down forever in both directions. So first, just make sure you can sketch that. So again, really, as long as these points are correct, your graph is close enough to mine that we should have similar answers. Alright, so a really common like visual thing to do here is to notice that we definitely have a constant section and then I have students want to focus their eyes in the middle and say that it decreases out from there. Okay, well the problem with that is you're not supposed to read a graph from the middle out. How are you supposed to read a graph? From left to right. So actually, what's it doing very first? It is increasing first, right? So let's go ahead and write all three options and then we'll see if we can figure out where it's doing each. Okay, but you're right, it is increasing first, right? So it's increasing um, from negative infinity, because remember we're talking about the x values, and that x value keeps getting wider and wider, keep going back to the left forever and ever. Okay, where is the x value where we stop the increase? One. What kind of one? You're close. Negative one, right? At x equals negative one, we stop increasing. Okay, and then what do we do for a time if we're traveling along that line? Constant. We stay constant. So we stay constant from negative 1 until what? No. Until x equals 1. Okay, so we're steady from negative 1 to 1, and then what do we do from there and then on for the rest of the graph? Decreasing. Decreasing. So how am I going to write that? So I know it might seem like we should write negative infinity, but remember, we're not talking about how far down we go. We're only talking about x, right? So we're going forever to the right, and that's why we have positive infinity, okay? So it can be a little misleading sometimes, so make sure you're only focusing on the x values. You're only caring about left to right when we're talking about increasing, decreasing, and constant. Yes? So no matter which way the arrows are pointing, that doesn't mean anything for increase, increase. It really doesn't. So don't pay attention to the arrows. I mean, the arrows do tell you, I guess, if you're looking from left to right, but other than that, not really. Okay. The arrow just implies that it goes down forever there. Okay. So it's not really indicating um, 
what values we're going to put in our interval notation for sure. <clears throat> okay, so just so we're clear, make sure that we know that this actually means from x equals negative 1 to x equals 1. Because what does that also kind of look like? Doesn't that constant section in particular look like a point? But it's not a point in this case. It's an interval notation saying that we're going from negative 1 to 1. So I wanted to make sure and say that because if you look back at that later, I don't want you to think, you know, why does that look like the point negative 1, 1 when that's not what it is at all. Um, all right, so we're going to look at another graph, but sometimes in more complex graphs, you might have two intervals um, that you want to combine together in a particular section. So if you want to combine multiple intervals, and by the way, this would apply to domain and range also. It's just we didn't run into any graphs like that. You're going to use kind of a capital wide letter U, okay? And that stands for union. So let's practice one where we might need to use that union symbol. Um, so we'll do one more where we have to look at a graph. So same instructions. In other words, I still want you to tell me where is it increasing, where is it decreasing, and where is it constant. So I don't want you to necessarily have to have graph paper for this class. If you just really, really want to, you can. Um, but most of the graphing we're going to do is just going to be sketches like this that don't need a whole lot of detail. Okay. So um, if you'll use the lines in your notebook paper to kind of make your horizontal line straight, then I think you should be able to wing it with the vertical lines. So here are the points that I want you to graph here. And then again, we're going to connect them. So I want you to plot 0, 1, negative 2, 0, and 2, 0. And then we're going to connect those. So take a minute. Before I do mine, I want to see if you can graph those points. So 0, 1, negative 2, 0, and 2, 0. So just plot them for now, and then I'll tell you what shape I want you to make. So 0, 1's here, right? Negative 2, zeros here, and 2, zeros here. And then what I want you to do is kind of make a curvy um, W with arrows going up in both directions. <clears throat> it shouldn't be jaggedy. It should be like a curvy W. By the way, if I asked you if this is a function, what would you tell me? Yes. yes? How come? Yes. Passes the vertical line test. Even though it's weird, right? It still passes the vertical line test. So it is a function. <clears throat> All right. So we're going to, again, just state increasing, decreasing, and constant. Now, one of these we're going to write none for. What are we going to write none for again? constant. There's no flat pieces where it's constant for a time, right? It changes directions a few times, but it's not constant ever. <clears throat> okay, so before I kind of finish here, okay, before I write in what my answer is, I want to talk about what it's doing first. So what's it doing very first if you look from left to right? Decreasing. It's decreasing first, right? So it's decreasing here. And then what does it do for just a little bit? Increase. It increases for just a little bit. And then what does it switch to again? Decreases for a little bit before it finishes out with what? Increasing. Okay, so it decreases, increases, decreases, and then increases. Okay. So we're just going to go from left to right and figure out what we need to say. Remembering that we only care about which values again here? X. Only X. Okay, so how far back to the left are we going to go? <laughs> Forever, right? So we are decreasing from negative infinity until what X value do we stop? Negative. Decreasing at, at negative 2. 
and then we pick back up at negative 2, and until when do we increase for a little bit? Zero. Until x equals 0, right? We don't care about y is 1 there. We don't care about that. We just care about x is 0. Okay. But then for a little minute, what do we do? Decrease. Decrease. So how do we write that? Zero. So we need a u there, right? Because we have another section now. So we're going to say from 0 to what x value? 2. two. two. Yeah, 2. I had to look myself because it looked really close, but it is to 2. And then forevermore, what does it do at the very end? Increase. Increase. So how am I going to write that? From 2 to what? Infinity. To infinity. Okay. Notice, just like in example 2, we go to infinity, not because we're going up, but because we're going right. Okay. So we don't care that we're going up or down. We care that we're going left to right for increasing, for decreasing, and for constant. Okay. Um, so, the next thing that I want you to be able to pick out when you look at a complicated graph, I don't think you're really going to have trouble with picking out what points these are, but maybe just a little bit of trouble getting used to how um, my math lab and how I'm going to want you to write these, because there's kind of different ways to do it. So in general, what's a maximum? I feel like we all already know that. Yeah, so a maximum will be the highest point. And then what about a minimum? Lowest. The lowest point. So without drawing a new picture, um, for example, three above, the W looking shape, I want you to find um, the maximum and the minimum, if any. And then we're going to talk about maybe some alternative ways that you might see this. Okay, so I want to keep this on screen and I want you all to tell me what you think the high point is and the low point. Now, if I asked you to find the high point, why is that actually tough? Because it keeps going forever, right? So there is no max. So what would we say about that? None. Okay, and again, just like the interval, there will be a multiple choice option for you to choose none. Okay, because there's no high point, right? We don't turn around and start going down or something like that. We just keep going up forever and ever. <clears throat> All right, so what do you notice about the minimum that's maybe a little weird? Yeah, there's actually a two-way tie for the minimum, sort of, right? But the minimum actually is zero, which is, I think, what somebody said, right? But the minimum is zero, but then if I want you to tell me where those are located at, what x values is the minimum located at? There's actually two low points. Yeah, so it's at x equals negative 2 and at x equals 2. Okay, so even though, I'm going to circle this, this is the type of responses that my math lab is going to um, prompt you for, but to be honest with you on a quiz or a test for me, I would be okay if you just told me the minimum was at these two points because I would still know that you knew where they were, okay? But on my math lab, it's going to ask you um, how low does it go, basically, and then where are those low points located at, okay? <clears throat> So kind of building on that, because we don't always have a max and a min, We have what's called a relative max and a relative min. And the word relative just means um, that it kind of depends on the situation. Okay, So I'm not going to define these separately because I feel like we already know that the max is the high and the min is the low. But this is going to be the max or the min on a certain interval. So we might look at a graph like number three, and we might say, okay, I know there's no overall max because we keep going up forever and ever, but maybe is there still a high point if I only look at maybe a portion of the graph? <clears throat> All right, so again, without having to draw a brand new graph, Let's say that I asked you to find the relative max on the interval from negative 2 to 2. Now, we already 
found out that there was no overall max. We said there wasn't any. So what I'm asking you to do, and I'm trying to keep it still on screen here, is I'm asking you to look up here at the graph, and I'm basically only asking you to look from negative 2 to 2. So I'm asking you to just look in this space right here. Okay. And my question to you is, if I just tell you to look at that middle section, now is there a max that we could look at if we were just focused on the section from negative 2 to 2? Yeah, so um, we would say that the relative max is what? Like, what's the highest point if we look at the middle? Okay, it's 1, right? And then where would we say it's located at? At x equals what? 0. zero. Okay, so this is what my math lab is going to want. Okay, it'll tell you that when you do your homework. Um, but I would be okay, again, if it was a test for me or something, with you just saying, hey, that relative max is at the point zero, 0,1. Okay, as long as you know that... Um, the max of the min actually refers to how tall it is, or tall or short. So when you find relative, you basically go to the y point and then find what x is at the y point. Um, the well, point. when you find relative, first of all, you pay attention to, I only want to look from here to here. Right, but, the only but then, yes, the, the max of the min itself actually is the y point. And then you make it that. Yes, okay. and then you talk about where it's located at. Um, okay, so what about for example two? And I'm going to slide that down here in a minute. I'm trying to have you not have to draw a whole bunch of other graphs because I think we have enough varied graphs where I can ask you some different things about them. Okay, so it is important that I asked you for the relative max. For example two, so I'm going to slide this down. So here's example two. This is what the graph for example two looked like. Remember there was a flat section. <clears throat> okay, so for this one I only want you to look in what window? From zero to what? To two. So I'm going to use my other color and kind of mark this off here. I only want to look in this little window right here, only from 0 to 2. Let me slide it down just a bit. Try not to cover up the last question, but still show you that graph. <clears throat> okay, so what do you notice is the weird part here? It's yeah, it's constant, so it's like there's a bunch of ties for the for the maximum, right? But I think we can still say what the relative max is, right? Like how high is it? It's three, right? But if I had to ask you where it's at, you could tell me a bunch of different points, right? It's, it's x equals three at x equals one, or at x equals a half, or any of those. Okay, so if you were asked to tell that on my math lab, you would just be asked to pick one of them. And probably most of us are gonna pick which one. We're probably gonna pick this one, right? Because it's the whole number there. Okay, but it's actually anything in between this x equals 1 and then x equals 0. Okay, it's anything squeezed in between there, but we like whole numbers, so we're probably going to pick that. <clears throat> okay, so the last thing, I don't know that we'll finish this today, but we'll get as far as we can. Um, I at least wanted to introduce this definition, and then maybe we'll have time for an example, maybe we won't. But regardless, we'll pick it up next time. <clears throat> so we've been talking about kind of vanilla functions. Okay? Piecewise functions are not um, as simple. Um, and so just like the name implies, they're functions that are kind of pieced together. So they typically have different looks to them. Um, two or more functions pieced together, I should say. So this isn't something that some math person came up with to make you miserable. This actually just represents a pattern change. And frankly, like few things in this world follow the same pattern always, right? Like if you just even look at recent events, right? If you look at, you know, virus numbers, virus numbers don't really follow a pattern. They've kind of been going up and down and up and down, right? 
So <clears throat> this is an example of a piecewise function. Maybe it's like a parabola pattern for a little bit, but then it just takes off and switches to a linear pattern or a line. Okay. But all it is is just a pattern change of some sort. It means um, that there wasn't a steady um, amount all the time. So it's always changing. All right, so I don't think we have time to get to the example, but we're going to pick right back up there on Thursday. Okay. Um, make sure if you have to miss, remember, um, I am going to have the recorded options for you at home, but you're supposed to also be letting me know and keeping in contact with me if you have to miss for some reason. Okay. So if you miss, roll call, come by and see me. Otherwise, I will see y'all on Thursday.